And welcome along, troops. How are we doing? It is, of course, myself, Big Gal, here with Stephen Kirkwood. And we are joined with our good friend and DJ music producer, legend Harvey Mackay. Harvey, how are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. How are you doing? Aye, crazy, isn't it, man? We were just chatting a wee bit off, uh, offline there before we hit the cord, and we're just all catching up a wee bit. Because the last time actually we saw you in the flesh was at the live show. Uh, many, a, a, mini, a, a mini mass gathering. Do you a know mini mean? mass gathering. <laughs> aye, so how you been, man? Like, how's, how's lockdown and all that? How's life? Good. Just to hang like everybody else, the standard of like, turning the house upside down and cleaning <laughs> places that I don't think had ever been cleaned. And then, uh, uh, so I kind of did that at the beginning, and then I've got, I can't really talk too much about it, but I've got a side project thing that I had to tie up, uh, and then it's always the same with me, like, for like sometimes you'll put me a computer, and you couldn't pay me a million quid to write something, and then once I just get hooked, you can't drag me off it, and once I've been in and tidied up that wee sort of side project I was doing, I literally haven't been, I've just been on a computer 24 hours a day just making music over it, so it's been good, mate, it's been really good, plus, and my attitude towards, the, I mean, you, you should always follow your heart with your music, but it's kind of like, the, things are a bit uncertain at the moment, and like usually there'll be a certain sort of, the music techno I'll be making will be for a certain sort of, it'll be like, right, this is what I do, and, and it's like, whereas there's stuff and projects that I have that probably would equate to any gigs or anything mm -hmm. like that, so you're kind of focusing on what keeps the, the, the train moving, and now I've got projects that, are more passion projects that could go somewhere, but now I've got so much time and who knows what's happening, so I can justify going and doing them. So it, be, that way I've been, I've been going, right, well, I can just sit and spend a few days in something that just sat there for ages that I've not really been able to justify the time to. So good that way. It's pretty cool how, like, you know, again, obviously it's not a cool situation, but, like, this kind of thing happening, like, because you're not really making music the way you would be for making music for gigs or whatever it's like as you say for right. projects it's such, such an interesting thing it's forcing you into a different yeah. realm know what i mean well, I, I wouldn't it's not i wouldn't say forcing but what i would just say that what's happening is before as i say if i'd be working that stuff and i'd love it and i'd be like oh, i can't really get any other ep or anything like that i'd be like oh, i'm just gonna do this and then i'd be just i would always just do that but it's now i've got so much time as i say you're going well you've literally got so much so I, I, as you say it's interesting when the end goal sort of slightly fell sort of the, the, you do the music for the passion of it but when it's like when it's for gigs and stuff like that as I say to keep that train yeah. moving then it's you've got a different sort of headspace but I so it's, it's, it's very interesting are you like you think like labels are looking at it differently as well now in terms of what they're signing are they looking maybe for stuff that will, will work more for streaming or for live set live stream sets you know what I mean like I've got no idea mate I'm bad, it? the whole thing man I mean like like I'm not against the live sets I mean I, I just did one there but it's got to be a wee bit different like I love like see Crank's live set the one, I think I spoke to you about it, I remember about WhatsApp. I mean, that was, I've watched a few that have been good, but that one, because he's just uh, so amazing, oh, right? Machine. I was watching that, I was dancing about the studio, loving it, it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did a few shandies as well enough, but it was, it was good. Um, and then when, the, then when Club 69 had said, you fancy doing one, and it was like there would be no air there and all that, kind of, I'm like, hey, that's cool, because it's a bit more, a wee bit of the environment and stuff, and loads of people said to me, how was it? doing the, 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 the set when there was nobody there, right? But to be honest, because I've not DJed for a few weeks because of what's going on, and like I've just been in the house and not really been doing it, see looking out tunes, and then going on and even just getting a blast there, I was loving it. Aye. So I didn't, I, do you know, I didn't need a crowd to play because I was enjoying playing to myself. Because it was, I was like, oh, this is great fun, I forgot. Plus, I was like, I'm going to want to go be my heart. So I was on just having a wee look and just thinking a different set. And I just, just even just goes a good few weeks away. I think you're like, oh, you forget the excitement of how fun it is to just DJ. Uh, takes, you you mean, so really it. takes you back to the start almost, like in the bedroom. I, Man, I'm loving this. That's what, that's, that's what I was saying as well. I was talking to somebody and I was saying, honestly, it's funny because what, what one of the things I'll do is, like, just to get a quick run is, I'll, like, I, I use the CDJs. But one of the things I do is, is I'm looking up a, a set. I've still got Tractor on the, on the computer, um, on my desktop. And what I'll do is, I always get a big batch of tracks. But what I'll do is, I'll fire them into Tractor. 
and just see and just play them through the tractor just to see how they flow and the energy of them. Yep. So, and then that gives me an idea of like, oh, well, I'll have that next and that next. So, but well, I mean, that one sounds better mixed with that one. And you really get this amazing rhythm grow, go, going that way. So, and, and I was sitting there and I was doing that. I was talking to somebody. I was like, that feeling that you get just when you te- hear two tunes just mixed together, absolutely dynamite. It's like the exact feeling I got when I was 10 years old and I started that oh, one. Yeah, that right. feeling has never went away. That, oh, that be <laughs> great. Okay, man. Brilliant. I mean, do you think? Do you think then other DJs that potentially are maybe struggling during this time or whatever, or have taken a wee break, mm-hmm. is maybe quite a good thing, even if they're not doing it as a live stream, just to get a wee mix on the go? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, if you don't make use of this time, you know, I mean, it's like one of the things I think. I think as well. I think going a bit deep in the whole subject, it's like I think. This thing is so huge, and I think a lot of people have just been burst out their bubble of like this. This is a structure of life that you grow up with, you know, and it's just the way it is. And I'm hoping that will make a lot of people go, "Wait a minute, man! I was just stuck in this loop of just getting up, working, paying the bills, and coming home, and and you're fitting everything else in." But I think a lot of people as well that maybe have like a lifestyle that needs them to make a certain amount of money. Yeah, you know, maybe spending all this time with their family, and then once they get back, they might go, Fuck, it's not uh, yeah. worth it. Yeah, you don't want to spend like that. Yeah, that's the one thing I noticed, right? See, when I started, when I when I when I started making a living from it, it was like that. And people say to me, "It's like you still enjoy touring, do you still enjoy DJing." You do it, and you get good gigs, not so good gigs, and the travel is amazing, to meet new people. But the one thing that is just totally blew my mind when I had it was the freedom that it gave. That during the week, you, you have to write music, you have to do your bit, but it's like that freedom of just, just it's like you pop out, they're getting up and at like half seven and doing this and blah, 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 and that's your structure. You pop out of it and you go, and then after a wee while, you look back and go, oh, that's, that's, that's hard. Do you know what I mean? And you think society's just grown that way and built this thing that we just expect that's the way it is. And hopefully this happened make people go, does it have to be like that for us? Do you know what I mean? Because if you're all just working their whole lives, yeah. they're working their lives away, and maybe this time burst forced it in the bubble that they would probably never take because they're so blinded with the system and money and what they want to get. Do you know what I mean? So hopefully it makes people think a bit differently. I think so. I think so. I think it's a great way to look at it as well. So see, we were talking a wee bit before. When do you think we, are, especially you guys, are going to be able to get back to doing your actual job because right now it's against the law to do what you guys do. No, uh, you, do you, could, you could have been a worse industry, mate. <laughs> do what we do. I mean, no. I mean, I've never broke a law before, Stephen. Never. <laughs> so when when are we going to get back to normal? When can we get together again? When can we legally party? When can we have some fun? I don't know, mate. Just maybe just do it alternate style and wear the old masks, man. We can all still rave, but I, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. It's this is the thing, it's so unknown. My big brother, he's uh, he's he's right into he's he's studying code and stuff like that just now. And uh, he's he's using a lot of what's going on just now to build sort of uh, I don't know what they're called, it's like prediction charts and all that, and, and all the information code and all that. It's amazing stuff, really, really interesting. But he's right into it, and because he's right into it, he's really, really researching all the top, top people, not what you're getting fed online. Right. Like, Guys that are proper viral experts and the guys that are like the head. There was a guy in Korea, South, South Korea, my brother was saying he's like the head man and they've dealt with it incredibly well. And it's because they've had it before, uh, well, had a version of it before and they made an arse of it and then they learnt the lesson. But so all this kind of stuff, but he was saying, and everybody's got these different versions, but Ryan was saying, if you listen to him and all the different epidemics he's dealt with, AIDS, Mers, all these different things, and he's taught, he explains how he's thinking behind it. And he's going, look, even if everybody does everything perfectly, no country's making ass of it, everything goes really well, we can see things creeping back to normality in October, November. But that's not normal. That's just the movement headed that way. Yes. Yeah. Every country does what, the, what, what it's meant to be. But what you're asking about as far as the, the gigs and stuff like that, I have, I have no idea. It really just depends. Like, you were talking about earlier on about like, a vaccine or something like that. Maybe if it gets to the point where they're like, right, we get this vaccine, we know it's safe, bang, everybody can have it. And then that would that would quickly change things. But until that, because nobody knows, because they're introducing all these different things to try and slow it down. 
nobody really knows how long that's going to happen for. And then if they lift the lockdown, then it could creep back up. So we could be going like this for a... So it's... I've got no idea. I mean, I'm like everybody else. I'm just trying to get the head down, stay positive, write music, and that's about it, man. See what happens. See what happens, I Doug's loving it. It's, it's, it's a great... It's Crazy so guy. Eight weekends or nothing, she's loving it, but is living the dream. That's the happiest I've ever seen that dog. Honestly, just <laughs> loving life. Look at the amount of happy dogs around at the moment. Oh, mate, totally. And the thing is, as well, so she's a collie, so Bo's a, a very smart dog. So whenever she needs a toilet, I'll just start open the door and she just goes out and she comes back herself, right? Right, right in the garden, right? But like, it's been that nice the weather. I'll just leave, I'll just leave the front door open all the time. She's just out and about walking about and all that. God bless her. Half the time she's sitting at the back of the close with the door open, just praying that I'm going to come out and throw the ball. But uh, <laughs> I do it on a regular basis, but it's, it's a call, so she just wants to stop. But she's loving it. She's absolutely loving it, man. Mad, isn't it? Mad. I, 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 God knows what's going to happen. I think it's, I think it's a guessing game, really, with all this stuff. So, but it's certainly I, it's it's thrown our industry on its head, and in terms for artists as well, and and how how artists now try and get income in as well. I. Well, see, because again, artists rely on gigs mm. mostly for, mm. for income and stuff. So, again, it's such a grey area. There's nobody's really had to deal with this yet. No, well, it's going to be an interesting one in terms of how people stay afloat. You know what I mean? See the whole uh, thing forcing people out their bubble and all that though that Harvey was talking about. Do you mm. think that's also going to force other DJs to start using their brain in another way and thinking, right, how can I bring an income in a different? way than I normally would because even we're starting to see people now saying oh you know pay to watch me stream and all that and I think that's 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 weird to gain because the big brands what they'll do is come in take over that and they'll just horse that and it's I, like I don't think people will do that because there's far too many people do I don't think they will but at the same time it might work if the audio is great if they're doing t- like three of the top DJs from their homes at different places people probably would pay to see that and I'm like mm. I don't no man. Oh, it's just maybe like self-publishing music or tracks that normally wouldn't come out, and then people donate if they're fans of you or something. I don't know. I don't, That's a good idea. I've got no yeah, idea. I'm, 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 absolutely, I'm absolutely lost as far as as what the options are going to be because uh, let's be honest, the actual making new money off the records themselves, the arse fell at that a long time ago. Aye, a long time. So, this is, so this is the thing. Our industry is a hundred percent set up for gigs, which has been taken away from us. So mm-hmm. we're, in a, we're in a bit of trouble that way. I mean, I think it just depends how much you've got in the bank as well, you know what I mean? If you've been sensible, yes. then you might be able to weather the storm for a year or two. If you've been touring for a long time, get a good bit by. But if not, I think I think a lot of people are just going to have to get jobs and just ride the storm and then and hopefully that's it. I back to the trades for me and you, Harvey, you know what I mean? Back to the joinery, man. Back to the Tesco or something. I don't know why I ever look at another tile again. I need to go out to my bathroom the other day and I'm going to bed and I was having nightmares. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. And you know what, though? We, we, you know, we need to have a laugh about it as well. Yeah. We're being serious, but at the same time, hopefully it's something that can work itself out. Because, again, some of the other videos have been seen out there. Not yeah. just the artists, but the tour managers, the... Social media people, the the guys that deal with the staging, all that. There are so many people in the industry now affected, not okay. actually just the artists. It is a worrying time, but do, I also think that if it turns round and everything opens up, we're going to see the most chaotic busyness mm. we've ever seen. It's like nobody's ever went a night out when it comes back, by the way. Well, I think one of the things, uh, I was speaking to Gary, Gary, but it got a bit, and it like, was something that said it, but he's like, I, I said that, he said, he said, it's tough. He says, but I think some good things will come out of it. He says, because I think a lot of the, a lot of it was headed the wrong way as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of it is very, very hype based. And like, it's just the same massive, massive people. Just all he has is Instagram and they're just playing in front of God knows how many people. And it's a lot of it, it's a hype machine and the money and the, and the stages. And it's like, it's getting to the point where it's like, it's not really the whole point. It's not mm-hmm. what it was about. And I think it's maybe going to give it a reset. I've seen a few resets in my time because I've been, as I say, I've been teaching since I was about 10 years old. Do you know what I mean? You had the kind of, you had the, you had the kind of, the more sort of acid stuff in the sort of the late 80s, early 90s. And then that, the race started and then it got really heavier. 
and then eventually the bubble burst through all the hardcore stuff and then you had the more commercial dance in the mid 90s and then that sort of commercial dance that blended into the kind of radio one accessible dance music like Lalo Bushwhack and all that kind of stuff and there was big massive events then that, then that crashed again and then mid 2000s the kind of minimal techno sparked the thing of oh here's techno but in a slightly different way and then techno came back round and, uh, and, and I, think, I think this is almost going to be like another induced crash that was probably going to come anyway yeah. because techno were just headed too up too quick and just weren't realistic so I think I think it's probably going to stop things, and it's probably going to put a lot of a lot of the big artists that would only play places like this and whatever, and a lot of these big mega hypes and big sort of arenas and stuff like that. It's going to just stop that dead for a while. So I think it's going to shake everything mm. up quite a bit. That's interesting. You might get all the big major headliners playing small shows again and doing like a couple right. of hundred people at a time. It might be caps of like it could only be a few hundred crowds. So, right. how would they, they, they do you know what I mean? So, resetting again, as you say, for, for the core. But the whole, the whole thing felt. started as an underground movement, like hip hop or anything else, and then it becomes so commercial and so yeah. shit. Right. That it, it's like everyone and their dog now wants to do it. So, it's actually probably a good point where we need to go a little bit back underground and it's like Maybe. allowed to have this party or no but we're going to do it anyway <laughs> aye, aye. Aye. you never know aye. but the, but yet, yet again we're still to find out in the long term how heavy the government are going to be so like you're saying that about the parties and that, I mean don't get me wrong that sounds amazing but like you're already seeing people getting in trouble for fucking like for having a picnic in a park when there's well, not even a park in the middle of a field when there's nobody there I'm all the thing right I'm all and I even heard Rogan the, on the Joe Rogan list his podcast all the time even heard him talking about it I'm all 100% for people keeping the distance being safe don't go if you don't need it right see if you've gone somewhere in a car in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody there what I happened don't, right, I don't see a point in that but people are getting in trouble for stuff like that and that was what Rogan was saying he was saying like somebody some family was like they went drove out the countryside and they were having a picnic and they get the, the police come up to them and gave them in trouble. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, that doesn't make sense. And that's like, that's a bit of that police state kind of feeling coming. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We don't know where it's headed. So, like, that's something they have an assignment in a field. You're talking about having a party. You know having I mean? an afters, having an afters. <laughs> and the thing is, as well, the thing is, as well, all right, it's a few generations down the line, right? But we still suffer in this country. And from, not as you, Europe, they don't have it at all. America, they do a bit, a wee bit, but I think the UK, the worst. We still suffer from that kind of Maggie Thatcher, anti-rave establishment view. So they still look at us like, well, the devil. I mean, you just look at how focused they were and get the axes shut. So no matter what happens, like, we're always looked upon this thing as, oh, it's bad. Even when it's so positive, I think we suffer from that. And I think if the kind of rules and regulations are tight, I think, the police will probably still try and shut stuff like that down, and I think that's still going to be lingering in their mind. That they oh, the bad raves, evil raves, which is up and down. It's you know, it's just ignorance, and they don't understand what the whole point of it is. Fair point, though. Fair point. Definitely. You know what I mean? Um, See, um, Harvey, just to change the subject, right? You, can, you, you, you're quite fond of putting up the wee Instagram videos you work in the studio, right? And there was one track you posted up, and you said something about an old school bass stab thing you played it in it was like uh, and I don't know if you put the name of it up but oh, I think I know what one it was uh, uh, it's quite melodic bass. quite melodic do you know what I mean I don't even wait a minute I think I've got the actual I knew I had to I wanted to ask you about that one today mate because that was sounding unbelievable if there's any news on that man I can, that I can play a tiny wee bit of that through to see if it's the right one right you can right, tell right, me right. I'll be able to tell uh, give me a second we're pretty exclusive here we go aye <laughs> aye uh, uh, wait a minute. Lockdown techno. It, it was a beast. Wait a minute. Look at that one. Aye, already I think it is aye. <laughs> that, that. that one. That's the one, mate. That is aye, right. that mate, Where did the inspiration that. come from? For that. Uh, well, do you remember when I did the thing for you guys and it was the when we did the SWG3? Remember I was saying I was working on a track and I was going about this thing 
and I got a sound, I went, fuck that track, I know exactly where that was, that was the track that it became, so I ended up coming up with that noise, it's funny, it's quite long winded, but I'll try and make it short for you, but I, I'd come up with that noise, and it was on uh, the repro, uh, great package for, I think, UHE or something, two cents, 120 quid for the tour, unbelievable, so I came up with that, we synth, and I was working on another tune, and I was like, nah, so I knew right away, I heard the wee melody in my head, scrapped it, restarted it, and then I was doing the whole tune, and then I'd done a demonstration for Simon Stokes a wee while ago, and I'd taken in my, the, the, the Model D clone thing, and I'd left my power adapter there, and so I just ordered another one, so the other day I was just working on it, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll see if I can get the sounds to the, the right repro on the Moog instead, you know that I've got the power thing, so took it all, uh, uh, got the MIDI, opened up the, the MOOC and, uh, and then sat and got the exact same sound from that. <laughs> Only that. And, oh my God, it's just, just the textures and everything. It's funny, it was quite funny because I was working in the tune and I was doing all these things to try and make it. It was working great, but I was like, oh, I need to fix that, I need to fix that. I was just tinkering with it all the time. And then as soon as I switched the bass to that, I was like, oh, that's it, done. Aye. It's so strong, none of the other stuff needed done. So right. I, so I, so that's, I'll get once I get it finished, I'll send it over, mate. Aye, that'd be great. Great. Has it got a name yet? Father, it's called Father. So, uh, but uh, I so once I get once I get it done, I'll send it over. I, I really really like that tune myself. It's very it's funny. It's you know, I think, I, I, as I say, you know, I love Aphexy stuff, and I think you can it's, the bass lines a bit Aphex influenced if you hear some of his stuff. It's that kind of skippy melodic, and but really then really straight drums. So, I, so that's one of the tracks. Sorry, on you go, sorry, on you go. Still, must be the delay. Aye, so that's one of the tracks I was saying that probably wouldn't fit into normally what I would do. Aye. But I'd done it, and I went, but it sat there for ages, and now the lockdown's on, I'm like, right, get into Aye, it. Aye, you can be a wee bit more experimental, do you know, it's, it's, it's pretty yep. cool. Would you say you're getting more melodic with your stuff overall, maybe, or has it always kind of been there, would you reckon? Nah, it just really depends. It's like, every track's different. That remix I'm doing now for Dennis and Pika, um, like it's more a hundred percent just just like a real twisted dark groove and just loads of wee engagements on it just to just to keep you interested. There's almost no melody in that at all because it doesn't call for it. It's just what it calls for. Um, what I say, when I start a track, it's like the sounds influence what I want to do. So first off I start creating the sound. And then once I create the sound, my brain goes, do it starts. I know what it wants. And as I say, it's almost like sometimes you try and do stuff to it, and it's like, nah, 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 no matter how much you want to force it to do it, it, it doesn't let you. Yeah. So, what about sampling, like Harvey? How much, how much sampling do you do in your tunes? Uh, mostly just for drums. So when I, when I say that, it's like, so I will make up and layer the kick drums, maybe like two or three kick drums. Um, what's a different uh, distortion and retweaks on them and stuff like that, when I put the envelope to them. And then... Most of the other stuff is made up on either the analog sort of Model D thing or the 2D basic. My setup is like the V-Pros I use, the Moog thing, uh, a Guru, which is an old uh, drum sequencer thing, um, and then just sound bikes for just like textures and stuff to layer up sounds. Um, I'll use a lot of high loops. Now the loops are doing high ends, but I won't actually use the loop. I'll just, I'll just take the sounds out of them and cut them and play about with them and layer them up and then treat them. And it'll just sit like, so I find I can get some really gritty, analogy, rough sounds by just playing about with a wav and a loop itself. And it's just quite distinctive. So that's about, it's pretty simple. Do you know what I mean? There's no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong, as long as it sounds good. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, I think the thing is, and I think most people, it was like one of the, one of the boys I know, and he'd sent me like one of the tracks he was working on, and he's like, oh, when he, I'd seen a video on YouTube, up on uh, Instagram, and it was one where I was playing that one with the keyboard that you like, and he's like, oh, he said, is that the way you do it with like the clip view and stuff? I said, oh, I. He said, why'd you do it that way? And I was like, look, I says, it's a lot more organic. You're sitting listening, you're in the groove, and then you're like, next bit, next bit, rather than it just playing, and you can't feel when you want to introduce the next bit, and mm -hmm. it's a lot more organic, and you're not relying on the all this crazy automation and everything, you're relying on next part, bang. And this is, it just makes it a lot easier. So then he did that and he's like, mate, what a difference? I just arranged a tune in like 10 minutes. I've been sitting in this for ages. Um, 
And one of the other things, and he was, he was like, I'm buying all this gear. He's buying all this different stuff. And I'm like, don't need it all, man. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you're just, but I find this, and I've got nothing against the equipment at all. Like, sonically, it's fantastic. But I find most of my friends who have lots of equipment spend most of the time playing it and hardly any time writing music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a balance of that. I've got, on my computer, I had, when I started, I think I'd be the same. I had uh, millions of plugins, all paid for. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody, right? Oh. Well, what, I did, what, I did, what I did at the beginning, what I did at the beginning was, right? That's everybody, you get to be told you bits and that, right? But I would, if I got a plug, because you get so many, if I got a plugin, if I used it, I bought it right away. But you want to try them out, do you know what I mean? You want to see, like, but I had millions of plugins. And then after a wee while, I'm like, you just realise you don't need all this shit. You need a few good, solid tools that you're 100% in control of. And that's all you really need. So I had millions of stuff at the beginning. I think you really can't have enough sound banks, though, because every every time I'll get a new batch of sounds, like textures, pads, just re noises that I've not heard, then that's a new noise. And then my brain goes, oh, whereas all the sounds that I've had, they've triggered ideas, but the, the ideas are done. So the new sounds I get trigger new ideas. So I find that's important to keep getting new sounds. But equipment, I don't know, man. I, I, find, this, I find some of the synths are so diverse and so much to them that you should be spending all your time figuring out how to learn that one. Yeah. I'm learning how to use 1% of it and then I mean, like using 20 synths at 1% capacity when you could use 2 at 100% and blow people away. Aye, that's, that's amazing, mate. That's bang on. Uh, Gary Beck talks a bit about that as well, and he's like, man, I'm not really interested in other bits. I've got what works for me and my sound. And yeah. bang, you know, and you, know, you understand this and you recognise it, you know? Yeah, I mean, Gary's the same. He's had the same setup for years. And uh, and it's very different to everybody else's. And I always remember him seeing people say to him, oh, maybe you should do this and you could do this. And, and if you got this, they tell you this and this. Uh, and he was like, what do you think? And I was like, and I was like hey, Gary, what? it's not broke, don't fix it. The shit's amazing. He's like, that's what I thought. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, this is the thing. I think people get carried away and go, well, wait a minute. What's, it's the end result that's important. You know, yeah. all the toys and cables that are lying about your studio. Do you know what I mean? I guess I like, the time, they will be gathering dust these bits of kit. You know what I mean? Aye. I mean, that, that, as I say, that bit, that, that mood thing that I've got is, uh, it's, it's for like, the, the other sort of project stuff I do, the more electro and stuff like that. That's just absolutely amazing. But it's really, really, really simple, that. Um, so it's a great wee thing just to have on the side. I find a lot of the plugins uh, on the computer um, for the high ends are tremendous. So the repro ones that I use for, like, pads, nice wee synth stabs, uh, textures, lead stuff like that, they're outstanding. It's, uh, like, I think it's a copy of the Profit or something, right? Mm-hmm. And it's outstanding. But when I was doing that track with one father, he asked about I had a wee bass because I didn't have my, my, I'd left my power cable. So I'd done that and it still sounded good, but then when I switched over to that, I was like, oh. So that does a job that a lot of the other ones can't. But online, the, uh, the VST, that, that, the, the more high end uh, sounds, it can, it can do great, I think. And that's a uh, you he, isn't it? Make that. Aye, that's it. I don't know how you pronounce it. He, I don't know. You he, I don't know. I'll just I'll aye, aye. you he. That's <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's one of the best things I, I bought because it was like, what year was it? I think it was, I think it was the end of maybe 2018 or maybe about 19, I'm not sure, but I was like, I wasn't. I just wasn't sure quite where to go musically, and um, and I yeah, uh, and I just I, I got a demo of them, and I'm like, I'll just buy it. Do you know what I mean? So I don't want it for ages. It's the best decision I've made, honestly. It's I've just I've had no desire to buy another son. Like not nothing. It does every single noise I want perfectly. So uh, it's, it's a great well, investment. So see, um, just musically this year, then did you have stuff? Like- a lot of stuff scheduled to come out this year then, or what's going on I with have, that? Well, I, I, I mean, what, what have I had? I had the Needed Pains come out. Uh, the Needed Pains one came out. That was the, the two tracks, Sequence 4 and They See My Shadow. That was it. Um, and then there was a one just on the drum code just there. And then I've got 
Uh, I've not confirmed it. It's confirmed, but not confirmed. It's one of those ones. I'll take them all, but I, I'm not going to You were still, do you know what I mean? But basically, I had, it's, it's probably, it, it's one of the other sort of new labels, and it's absolutely killing it just now. It's pretty big. So, um, and I, I sent him about, oh, about eight or nine tracks. He's like, to every one of them. So, so <laughs> well, I've got, I think I've got maybe two, maybe three EPs on that. Um, and I've got also this other project that I've got, I can't even talk about that one. It's going to be completely on a DL. I love that, I love that. Here, I've got aye. some, but I can't tell you. Aye, aye, but what I'm saying is, I get like, <laughs> you but, but it's, we're going to put it out and not so that people don't know who it is. They'll probably, probably find it eventually, but we don't want them to know. I like, that. that's, I like that. That's really, that's really exciting to get the artwork and all that back for it. And it's been a passing project to see, see, it's the artwork and all that. I'm like, I'm releasing music now, so don't get me wrong. It's nice to see it come out, but I'm not like, oh, aye, like, aye. I've been doing it for ten years. So, but when this one's coming out because it's a passion project, I'm getting the butterflies. I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. So, so I'm excited about it. So that's kind of what's happening. That's brilliant. Yeah. The thing is, as well, it's like you know, I think artists like, should never be like scared of doing something else, like a passion project, or whatever. Sometimes you can overthink that, can't you? Like and go, oh, well, I'm not going to do that or whatever, but. You know, it can reignite and refresh things up massively. Like a wee side thing, it can you know, as you say, because the excitement coming off you talking about it there is it's what it's all about, isn't it? Really. The thing, the thing is as well, when you're doing, you see, when you're doing it like a side project, so that's like that track, Father. That is definitely loads of elements and style and baseline and all that stuff has came from this other project. So right. it's that 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 sound and feeling has now migrated into my techno and created this sort of slight hybrid of that and that. But the thing is, one of the reasons I love doing the, the, the different project with different sounds is, is was the fact that it was more a, it was a no rules project. So it was like, right, I'm going to make music and I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm not going to try and fit into any genre style or way of thinking. I'm just going to sit down and if I, if I like something, I'm going to make it. And that was so liberating. But then I learned so much because usually I would go, oh, that won't fit, that won't fit. So it was all these things and synths and stuff I could have been learning, but because I was sitting, I was between these tight parameters of what would be, what would fit into my genre that I'm known for. Yeah, I wasn't learning as much. Whereas once I went right, this side project, no rules. I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Just it was epiphany time. Just all these different things I was figuring out. So it's a really good thing to do. I think I said that though at the start. But if you're starting though, we're making music. I would say pick a one genre and nail it. Because then it's like learning how to do. I started mentioned about the synths before, yeah. right? like thirty synths at one percent. You know what I mean? Thirty genres at one percent. Nail it first. I've kind of been doing my techno for a long time, so I can go and try something different. But if you're at the start, definitely focus on what you're doing and get that nailed first. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Great advice, mate. Definitely. I also love the fact that you're keeping the alias hidden. Like that's the whole point of an yeah. alias. I mean, you know. And and I think it's so easy to just batter out an alias under your already potentially established name and say, everybody go and follow my other stuff. It's like what the excitement now for you is going to try and watch something grow organically with people yeah. not knowing it's you, but they're going it's to leave. The music then, the music, yeah. the artwork and all that, you know, it's a bit bad. Right. Yeah, and the thing is as well, it's quite exciting because it was like it was a few years ago when it was one of my mates, uh, Ronan and another one of them, Scott, like, it was them that exposed me to a few different sort of artists, like FX and some of the other stuff that I'd been listening to, that I'd listened to before, but not really dived in, and like they kind of exposed me to that stuff, and that was about 2000, end of 2017, and then I started dipping my toe in the water, so it's quite it's quite exciting to think back at the time when I was discovering that music, going, oh, what's this, no real shit, this is amazing, mm-hmm. and then now, like two, two odd years later, I'm putting out my EP of that stuff, so... So it's good, and the thing is as well, it's it's taken a long time because it's not something that I've been in rush a rush to do. So it's just like ah, oh, let's. But in saying that though, like one of the tracks that's coming out is probably the strongest track. It's the first ever track that I wrote in that genre, and it's that's probably the strongest track me be. But I so that's good fun, good fun. That's excellent, awesome man. Well, one of the things right we've been saying towards the end of all the podcasts, which I'll, I'll ask you as well, right? Is can you give us a, a DJ set that maybe people haven't watched that they can dig during during the lockdown, or even an artist to maybe go and explore? Uh, easy, easy, easy. Well, I, I mean, one of my favourite mixes of all time. I had it on yesterday at the back garden with my big mate Larry. One of the boys, he lives next door. Don't worry, I'll keep it short. Don't run out of time. But he lives 
like you used to know him for pressure and all that. He lives right next door, so we can have a wee party just to, with, the, with the garden, with the fence, three short fence. But it's an Andrew Weather, he's a big fan of him as well, that's why I brought it up. It's uh, Andrew Weatherall at Rock Ness in 2011 is one of the oh. best sets I've ever heard. It's absolutely tremendous. I was playing on the Friday, and then so I played on the Friday, and then I just stayed and party the whole weekend. And I was there at Rock Ness, and I remember at that point in time, because they, they set everything, it was a techno stage, and you know, Andy plays a lot slower. So everybody was rattling it all day. He just came on and went, boom, stop, 110, screwing wow. away. Even people just going, what the fuck is that? Ten minutes later, everybody's just like, ah, uh, here we go. Going for it. And it is, to that, that's, that's almost ten years. And it's still one of my favourite. Every time me and my brother had a barbecue, that was a barbecue song. Get, get Andy on. So that's, that's one. That's, that's, I would say that's the one I Amazing. Nice. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time today, mate. Ah, no, no, pleasure, boys. Pleasure. Catch up again, mate, honestly. Aye, definitely. Nice one. Therefore, well, aye, that's been another episode of the podcast during lockdown. Um, another great one. Cheers, Harvey. Appreciate it, mate. No worries. Catch up, guys. All right, see you all soon.